There you go. Oh man, how do I do this geometry? Jeez. Angle side angle. Oh no, it's side angle side, yeah. Oh, how did that happen? I wonder how the apple just fell from the tree. Maybe I should or I should ask Archimedes. Yeah. Oh <laughs> how did the how did the apple fall from the tree again? Wait, wait, oh yeah, it's Galileo! Yeah! And Newton! How how does this happen? So, did Newton really get hit on the head with an apple? Probably not. He most likely observed an apple falling from a tree, but nonetheless, this observation led to some serious knowledge dropping. But we're ahead of ourselves. Let's begin by talking about the physicist before Newton, Galileo. Well, Galileo disliked every physicist before him because well, they were wrong about everything. And so he wanted to prove them wrong. And so, in his main experiment, supposedly he took two cannonballs of different masses. He walked up to the Leaning Tower of Pisa, to the very top, and dropped them off at the same time, showing that the two masses will land on the ground at the same time. Galileo proved that the two masses would hit the ground at the same time. He showed that there was a force acting on both of the masses. Now he didn't understand exactly what force this was, and we all know that later that would be Newton who discovered this force. Now Galileo had other experiments, of course, like a rolling ball experiment where he showed that both light masses and heavy masses are acted upon this force which he has not really named yet. But we are going to focus on his experiment where we dropped the two masses from the Leaning Tower of Pisa. So, why don't we test it out ourselves? Two. Three, two, one, go. Pumpkin and milk. All right. It's actually not too bad of a cleanup, so... It smells really bad and there's all it's all over the wall. Oh, why was I talking? That was awesome! TV and log. Alright. Two, one, go! Alright, well, now that we've had some fun reproducing Galilean's experiment in nature, there he is. Thank you, Mr. Galileo. That was pretty fun. Um, it's probably time to get to some calculations. So, I know, the nitty-gritty part, chug, plug and chug, but let's get out our uh, equation sheet here with all our weapons. Got to bring the right weapon to the battlefield. And then we have our uh, data table uh, from the experiment. And so the first thing we got to do is set up a coordinate system. Here's the little house that we dropped the objects from. And there's the ground. Let's do the traditional XY coordinate system. We can pretty much just disregard the X direction since objects were only thrown in the Y direction. No angle or anything like that, so let's just concern ourselves with the Y direction and write down our known values. Uh, v initial in the Y is going to be 0 meters per second since objects were thrown from rest. Then V final is going to be unknown. Uh, the change in time is about 1.2 seconds since all of our value, all of our trials... <coughs> ah, stupid phone. Sorry about that. Um, all of our values had a change in T of about 1.2 seconds, so we're going to take that value. Then uh, the change in Y is initially unknown, since this is the history of uh, weights and masses. We didn't really have any precise way of calculating the change in Y. Um, we couldn't just put up a ladder 
and do a Pythagorean theorem since one, I don't really think there were any ladders back then, and two, Pythagoras, he didn't really even come around until like the 6th century, so I think we're just going to have to do the eyeball approach. Uh, we did, we do have this picture here of a, a didier standing right up next to the little house, and um, one didier is about oh, 1.93 meters, and it looks like we can fit about one, two, maybe three, maybe like three and a half, three and three fourths of didiers, I'd say, or three and three, th let's take three and two thirds, uh, somewhere in between. So multiply that by three and two thirds. One point nine three, and that equals about seven point. 08 meters for our uh, change in y. And then finally the acceleration is unknown. Theoretically it should equal 9.81 meters per second squared. The acceleration due to gravity, that's what we're going to be trying to uh, solve for here to prove that all objects do in fact fall at the same acceleration in the y direction uh, regardless of their mass. So back to the equation sheet here. I kind of like this equation here, this weapon. We have all these values um, except for A, so uh, we can solve for A. Change in Y equals the initial in Y times T plus one half AT squared. Well, this just goes to zero since the initial in Y is zero. Change in Y equals one half AT squared. We set this equal to A. Two times change in Y divided by T squared equals A. Plug in some values. Two times 7.08 meters divided by 1.2 seconds squared. And this is going to be equal to 9.83 meters per second squared equals A. Well, hey, that's not too bad of a um, experiment there. Our calculations are actually rather close to the uh, acceleration due to gravity. Uh, you know, we are our... Uh, Measuring devices maybe weren't the most accurate back then. I think. Oh, dang it! Stupid phone. It keeps ringing. Um, I'll just ignore that. Anyways, uh, what was I saying here? Um, our acceleration of 9.83 meters per second is very close to 9.81 meters per second acceleration due to gravity. I think as time would go on, this value would get closer to this value with uh, more innovative measuring devices and timing calculations so I think we did pretty well there now what we really want to do is find uh, the force at which our objects were falling at in the y direction so some of our forces in the y direction equals mass times acceleration and this is Newton's second law and going back to the data table I did a little pretty work here and actually found our uh, force values so uh, let's see the apple had a force value of 1.8 newtons it's not too bad. My grandma could have taken that. So that actually wasn't too big of a blow when I was trying to do that geometry homework. And then basketball at 6.91 newtons all the way down to the TV at 150 newtons. That's a lot of force. Luckily I did not get hit by that. Not sure if I would have survived that one. Um, so in conclusion here, we found that all objects do, in fact, fall at the fall at a constant acceleration, um, 9.83 meters per second squared. And then, uh, based off of this acceleration value, we could find some force values in the right in the y direction. And uh, based off of the mass of the object, which we found earlier, you can calculate the force in the y direction see how many newtons. That's pretty cool. Thanks for watching. That concludes our calculations portion. Go!